So hello from me and my faux bob that I have going on here at the moment. No, I have not cut all my hair off, don't panic. Kind of like this length actually, I'm quite into it. Today I have a little bit of a downer video for you but I'm kind of looking at it in a positive sense because it's always good to share opinions. So I'm gonna be talking about a few of the products that I think are just a little bit overrated. I do actually like all these products. I like the brands that they're from, I've used them loads in my daily routine, but I just kind of think they're not quite worth the hype that some of them get. Some of these are just absolutely praised and shouted from the rooftops and I kind of get why people like them, but I don't see the absolute massive, massive hype. So I'm gonna talk about a few of those today. A few of these are skincare and I'm actually gonna start with those first. I think when it comes to skincare, I'm very hard to impress. I have quite a high standard and if something doesn't quite meet that, then I'm just not going to love it. But some things I'm just a bit, hmm unsure of. So I'm going to talk about the products before I start rambling and rambling on. And the first one is Bioderma. This guy is just so, so universally loved. And I've actually gone through so many bottles of this. This is probably my fifth or sixth bottle. The first couple I had to sort of negotiate from Paris or order from France. And then they finally started selling it in the UK, which is great. I think they even have this in Boots now. So you can literally pop down to Boots and grab yourself a Bioderma. But actually as a product, I don't really rate it. There are so many micellar waters on the market now. And I think when this came out, it was literally the only one. So if you wanted a micellar water, you use this. But now there are so many formulas and ones that I actually much prefer. I do really like the Bioderma Hydro Bio. That is a really good, more intensely hydrating version. It does the same thing, it's just better for dry skin. And I'm also a massive, massive fan of the Nivea sensitive one. For me, this just really, really dries my skin out. I'll use it if I'm in a pinch and I have nothing else, but I just don't really like the way it feels on my face. So that is why I think this one is a bit overrated. Another product that I think gets a lot of its hype purely from the difficulty it is to actually get hold of it is the Kate Somerville Goat Milk Cream. I have to say, when I saw this in Sephora, I just made a beeline for it, and I was so excited to try it, but actually it's very so-so. First of all, I absolutely hate the pump that it comes with. I thought this was really cool to begin with, but actually it's such a pain. You basically have to push the top down, and ooh, some product should pop out, but it's really hard to kind of scrape it off, and I know it's probably a lot more hygienic than dipping your hand in, but it's just very, very annoying and frustrating. So that, I don't love about it. And actually the cream is so, so thin. It's not hydrating at all. Even in the summer when I was using this, it just didn't really do anything for my skin. And I have quite oily skin in the summer. It tends to kind of act up around then. It's just very light and doesn't have a lot to it. So I was really kind of unimpressed by this because I thought it would just be a miracle changer, that it would be amazing for me. And I just didn't really like it. Um, and then another product that again dried my skin out really actually quite irritated my skin and I just stopped using altogether is the Pixie Glow Tonic. This stuff gets raved about so much and I think there was a bit of a moment when AHA cleansers and more kind of chemical based exfoliators were a really big deal and this came out as just the top must have absolutely need to try one. And I went through a phase of using those kind of exfoliators and they just never really did a lot for my skin. This one especially I feel like is quite abrasive and very, very concentrated. It has 5% glycolic in it and it has aloe vera and ginseng in it. I think there's also some other kind of fruity enzymes and things like that in here. But it just seems really, really strong and really, really abrasive on me. Not quite as much as the Alpha H liquid gold, which probably should have made it into this video. I really, really can't stand that stuff. But this just made my skin sore didn't feel great. I used it in the correct way. I put it on after I'd cleansed and then I did a hydrating toner over the top. I only put it on at night and then used an SPF again in the morning to protect my skin. I just don't really think I've found a way of using this and my skin doesn't like it. So unfortunately, Pixie Glow Tonic, you are not worth the hype for me. So skincare is very subjective. I think when it comes to makeup, you're probably more likely to like a product. I think makeup is more sort of one fits all. But there are a few things that I've seen get so much hype and that have been talked about so much. And in fact, things that I've talked about a lot that I've now realized that I don't actually really get on with. So the first one actually, I think I've I've mentioned before that I don't like this but it's the Naked Skin Concealer and I'm so sad that I don't like this because I see it mentioned so much and it kind of really gets me excited again and I want to use it and I try it and then I remember that it's just not good. <laughs> this one for me just doesn't sit right on my skin. At first I thought I had the wrong colour which by the way the colour choices are not great with this. It was either super super pale, even paler than me which is rare to find in a concealer or just a bit yellowy and not right. I think if I bought the next one up and mixed it that would probably be a good 
good shade for me, but I don't want to have to do that with concealers. I want something that just works instantly. It goes patchy, it goes flaky, and no matter how much moisturizer I have under this, it doesn't sit right. And actually it doesn't give a great amount of coverage. Once I've blended it in and tried to make it look good because of the texture and the formula of it, it just doesn't seem to cover up anything that I want it to. So sadly, this one just does not work for me, but I'm sure it probably works for loads of you guys because I get so many comments all the time about how good that one is. The next thing I want to talk about is such an old school hyped product. This is probably one of the first things I started seeing on YouTube when I started watching it. People were just madly, madly in love with this and it's the MAC Studio Fix Powder or Foundation Powder. I bought this a long, long time ago and I've probably only used it a few times because honestly it just doesn't really do much for my skin. I've tried using this in so many different ways and it always ends up looking really, really cakey on me. It's a very pigmented formula I think because it is a foundation and a powder in one. But for me, I think that just equals very, very cakey looking skin. So I really, could never get on with this. I've tried it on its own, I've tried it as a setting powder, I've tried it in so many different ways and I've just never really found the way that works for me. So if you have any tips on using this, I'd still love to know, but I just think it's not really worth the hype that it gets. So this next one I do still use quite a lot. I still crack it out every now and then and it's the Kevin Aucoin Sculpting Powder. Now the reason that I'm not obsessed with this, I think I can attribute to the fact that they actually repackaged it and I think when they did that they also reformulated the product. It used to to come in quite a long compact there was space for a brush in there as well and there was just more powder it came in a sort of square and I've seen people compare the two and there's actually a lot less product in here but at the same time it doesn't actually apply like the original packaging did I've seen people just whack their brush in here and really go to town on their cheeks and have really nice subtle soft contour so of course I tried that when I first got this and I ended up looking like I had stripes across my face so I think the reason that there's a lot less product in here is that they've made it more intense intensely pigmented and they've just put less of it in and I don't really love that. I don't like it when brands change the formulas of products because they're never really going to be the same kind of consistency as people fell in love with. So it's a shame that they did that because I think it's just impossible now to get hold of the original one. So this just never really lived up to the hype for me but I think it is down to the repackaging and the reformulation which is very very sad. This next one I feel like I'm going to get a bit of hate for not loving because this product has such an intense cult following. It's the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade I was so excited to get this when I came out. I think it was the first product on the market like this. So the first kind of waxy pomade brow gel. So I was totally stoked. I was really, really excited to try it. And I went for the shade dark brown, which is quite a good color match for me. Probably not at the moment because my hair is basically yellow. But just the formula of this is so hard to work with. It's so intensely pigmented that I just always end up looking like I have super, super dark brows, really, really thick, quite harsh edges, just not really the kind of brows that I ever go for. I've tried using it on a drier brush and using less product, but I can just never really get it to work for me. There are so many other products like this now and ones that I actually really, really prefer. The Tarte Brow Pomade is great. I think that one's just much, much better than the Anastasia one. For me, this is just far too creamy, far too pigmented and really, really hard to work with. I've seen so many amazing videos and photos on Instagram though, of people using this and it looking amazing. But for me, it's just not the one, unfortunately. I'm trying to go through this in order of how it goes on to your face. So I have a mascara next. Now this is quite a new mascara. It's not quite as hyped up and as talked about as any of these other products, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. And it's a mascara from NARS. This is their Audacious Mascara. Again, I think mascara is quite a subjective thing. I really think it depends on what you like, on how your lashes are already and the kind of look you're going for. But this for me just did not impress. And it's a shame because NARS products are just generally quite amazing. I don't really think I found something from them that I don't like. So I was really quite excited to try this, but it actually let me down a little bit. And I think it's mainly because of the brush. It's a very intense brush. There are some serious spikes on this to the point that it actually hurt my eyes when I was using it. I like to kind of wiggle my mascara around quite a bit. I like to really get in there and get a lot of product onto my lashes. So of course I went straight in with this and just got it right in there and it actually hurt because it's quite spiky. The formula is probably great. If you actually sit there and really work at it, you can get some nice thick lashes and it's the kind of thickness that isn't clumpy, which is always what I look for in mascaras. But I just think the wand of this is the reason that it makes it really not great. So so it's not a mascara that I ever really pick up. It's not one that I ever actually want to use again. And it really surprised me because it's from NARS. I expected to love it. So I thought I would just give that one a quick mention. I'm just such a lover of lip products 
anything generally seems to impress me. But there were a couple that didn't really live up to my expectation of how I thought they would be. And they're from YSL. So these are the Rouge Pure Couture Lip Stains. And I just remember how much people were talking about these when they came out. They were so hyped. Everybody was using them and talking about them and loving them. And I just remember that I had to have one. I just had to buy one. So I went for this one here, which is the shade 301. Of course, it's a red. I was just really excited to try this amazing red that stayed on your lips forever and looked really intensely pigmented and a little bit glossy as well. But actually, because these are stains, I don't think they ever will be as intense and as bright and pigmented as a lipstick. I think these sort of were the era before liquid lipsticks came out and I thought they would be something very similar to that, but obviously nobody had really done those yet. So actually these are very sheer stains. It looks quite pigmented on my hand, but once it gets on your lips, it just doesn't really amount to anything. And the same can be said actually for all of the colors. I think that works great for the nude shades, but for the bright ones, there's just not really much point to them. I'm not really a fan of a sheer lip color anyway, so these probably weren't ever gonna be my cup of tea, but I just see so many people talk about them still and I just never really loved them. So I thought they were worth a mention in this overrated products video. So that is everything that I have to talk about today. Hopefully this video wasn't too negative. Don't worry, I have a favorites video coming up on Sunday, which is just super long, super chatty, and all about really good things. I think it'd be really interesting if all of you guys would let me know what your overrated products were, if there's anything that you really wanted to try for ages and then you got your hands on and actually it probably didn't live up to the hype. So leave a comment down below if you can think of anything and while you're there, give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe as well if you're new. So thank you again all for watching and I'll see you all soon. Bye! Thank you.